Hello and welcome back. Gamadroba. We are coming to you from the Pankisi Valley in the east of Georgia in the Caucasus Mountains. And as you can tell, it's snowing. This video is going to be all about how we survive the winter months traveling in our van. We're going to be on quite the journey this time, traveling up to the Russian border in the north of the country. And honestly, we have no idea what to expect apart from more of this and more <laughs> cold. So this video is going to be really exciting. Hope you stick around and I hope you enjoy it. We're on an adventure, driving as far east as our rusty, not so trusty van will allow. Join us, Lucy and Ben, on our journey around the hot springs, remote villages and undiscovered lands of Europe, Turkey and beyond. In this episode, join us for a snow-packed adventure as we drive north into the greater Caucasus Mountains pushing ourselves and our van to its limits. We share with you the hardships of winter travel as temperatures plunge to minus 22 degrees and our van battles against waxing fuel and frozen brakes frozen. before continuing to the Ingushetian border, marking the furthest northeast point on this journey. Oh word, it's bright out here. <laughs> so last night we had a really good test for the wood burner. It was 28 degrees inside and it was minus seven outside. That was probably warmer than we've been on this whole trip. It was fantastic. Maybe ever. And I think we're well and truly addicted to it now, but it's going to get a lot colder. Today we're going to start heading north to one of the northernmost towns in Georgia, way up in the Russian border deep in the Caucasus Mountains. It's going to be up to about minus 17, maybe even minus 20 at night. It's definitely going to be significantly colder than it was here. So this was a good test, but the real thing is yet to come. So as you can see behind us, the wood burner comes straight out the side of the door here through this metal sheet that we've got. But let's go inside and we'll show you just how this thing works. So this is the first time in many years that we've actually had heating in our van. We originally had an Urbis Spectra diesel heater, but it just sort of went out of commission and we haven't ended up using it for the last few winters. So we picked up this little wood burner in Kutaisi, Georgia's second biggest city. It cost us 70 lari, which is the equivalent of about 20 pounds. And the flue also cost us the same again. And then we paid three pounds to get this little aluminium plate made up for the window. So it's a really cheap setup and it's so light I could almost lift it with my little finger. It's amazing for traveling in the van. It doesn't add any extra weight. It all folds up really neatly behind our seats here. And then when we want to use it, we pull it forward. We've got a couple of ceramic tiles, one here and one behind it to deflect the heat away from anything that can be melted. We have to move all of our coats out of the way and anything that's near the burner and then fold the seats forward. They flop forward to give it a little bit extra room. And then we just put the wood burner in place, slot the flue in, and then poke it out the window outside. 
So we got a custom aluminium sheet made up with a hole in it for the flue and we simply slide the sliding door window open and then slot the plate in. It's actually no colder than the glass itself having this thin layer of aluminium here. And then the flue simply comes out and goes up there and we recently managed to get a rain cover for it which is brilliant because it stops not only the snow and the rain coming in but also the wind which means that the flue extracts better as well. The only slight problem we have when it's this cold is the van's reluctance to start. She is 20 years old now so it's not surprising that it does take us about two or sometimes three attempts to start in the cold and if she still doesn't want to go if that diesel won't ignite then we have to get the easy start out and spray it up the air intake to give her a little bit of encouragement. <laughs> So we've overcome our first two challenges this morning. The first one was just simply getting out of bed because it was freezing. And who wants to get out of bed when there's icicles hanging off the sides of the van? No one. Second challenge was starting the engine. We managed it. The third challenge now. Now this looks tiny. This looks embarrassing on the GoPro, I know. But this little hill here is pretty, <laughs> pretty steep at the end. And it's packed, really compacted ice. Yesterday it was fresh snow. But since then... Oh, rocks falling behind me. I'm gonna walk back. Uh, since then, a couple of Jeeps have come down here and really crushed the snow in, and now it's started to melt and it's just really icy. So we're gonna uh, have a bit of an issue getting up there, I think. Wow, that's really falling. There's rocks falling behind me. So that's third challenge. Let's see how we get on. Oh. That's not a good start. Try reversing. Forward, 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 stop. Go, 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 go. Yep, stop. Well, that was very nice of him, but yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed. <laughs> Just about to tackle the hill and then a plough comes. It's amazing. I wanted to have some fun up there, slipping and sliding, but no, nice of him anyway. That's I think really he nice. might have thought we were stuck. Right, well, it's made our journey a little bit easier to begin with at least. <laughs> spent the night in the Pankisi Gorge, a remote valley in the mountainous Kakheti region of eastern Georgia. Here the Alazani River carves out a 10 km long gorge south of the georgian chechen border, emerging from the southeastern slopes of the Caucasus Mountains. The valley is inhabited by the Kist people, an ancient Muslim community who migrated from neighbouring Chechnya and settled here in the 1800s. Despite having lived in Georgia for over a century, they've kept hold of their original culture, language and religion, which has merged with Georgian traditions to create a unique cultural enclave in an otherwise orthodox Christian country. During the Russian-Chechen Wars of the 90s, thousands of Chechen refugees fled to the Pankisi Valley, and a group of Chechen separatists set up their base in the region. Despite its troubled past, walking around the village streets here feels perfectly safe, set against a dramatic mountain backdrop. The Pankisi villagers are warm and welcoming, and many are actively working to boost tourism in the area to change the negative image it once had and restore its rightful impression 
of a rich valley of peace, culture and pastoral life in the tranquillity of the mountains. After leaving the valley with bellies full of delicious shoti puri, we began to climb high into the mountains, where the road conditions quickly deteriorated. We'd have to adapt quickly because where we were headed was almost certainly going to be the most challenging drive we'd faced on this journey so far. We had hoped the town below the mountain would be clear, but as we arrived, it became obvious other people were also struggling. Unfortunately, one of the hardest things about winter travel is when we get a big snow dump like we did yesterday and any tracks off the main road are just inaccessible. They're about a foot deep or more in snow and you really can't see where you're driving and I don't know if we'll get stuck if we go down there which means we're limited to kind of the main roads but we really don't want to be anywhere near the main roads when we find somewhere safe to stay for the night. It's a dilemma. It's getting late now. So this is what we're dealing with right now. Every single time we see a track on Google Maps that we think, yeah, let's give it a go. We might be able to get down there. That's when we arrive, it's like that. It's just too deep. Let's move out of the way for this car. It's just too deep to even comprehend driving through in this van. <laughs> this, is, um, this is definitely a drawback from traveling at this time of year. Beautiful, as beautiful as it is, the scenery is 10 out of 10. The park up opportunities are very limited and I do not want to park in a car park overnight. That's just not how we do things. <laughs> what are we gonna do? We searched in vain for a place to stay, but as the hours progressed, our hope wavered. So last night we settled for this <laughs> not so amazing car park. You can just about hear the road up here. This is not somewhere we'd obviously usually choose to stay, but the view behind us is really beautiful. This completely frozen over snowy river. It's absolutely beautiful that side, not so much that side. So today we are going to tackle the last part of this journey to the northernmost town of Georgia along the Georgian military road. So this road links this country all the way up to Russia. It goes up to about 2,400 meters. Honestly, guys, we've got no idea what the conditions are gonna be like up there. I think there was a little bit of snow last night. Every time I look at this route on Google Maps, it's full of red lines and orange lines where there's just really heavy traffic. So we're expecting that it's gonna be a little bit tricky and that coupled with the ridiculous driving in this country 
not holding out hopes that it's going to be <laughs> a particularly relaxing day but the views are supposed to be absolutely insane so we are gonna head off in a minute once this van has started up again good old thing she's not let us down yet in this cold but tonight it's going to be about minus 20 minus 19 maybe possibly even colder with the wind chill so we are a little bit anxious but we're going to see what the day has in store for us <laughs> no. And so we began the final leg of our journey to the northernmost town along the perilous Georgian military road, excited to see the greater Caucasus mountains in all of their glory and nervous about the challenging conditions we'd likely face. As we climbed to almost 2,400 metres in the dead of winter, The scenery was captivating, like nothing we'd seen before. Small villages clung to frigid mountainsides, almost entirely obscured by deep snow. Life seemed frozen in this remote region, all except for the road carving its way through the never-ending expanse of bright white mountains. It really felt like we were heading to the edge of the world. But then... Ooh, a little Dunkin' Donut over there, Lucy. Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> In the middle of nowhere. What do you reckon? We just stopped to get some fuel. I think we're at about 2,300 metres now. And there's just this one guy doing the fuel. So it's taken a while here. People are getting impatient. I don't know why we can't just do our own fuel. You know, like the UK. <laughs> no one seems to be trusted to do it once you leave like Western Europe. But I've got to show you this car I just found buried under about a metre of snow. You will laugh when you see this. It looks like it's um, definitely here for the winter. <laughs> Good, two Turkish coffee, please. Okay, I'll take it. Thank you. It's not every day you get a Turkish coffee at Dunkin' Donuts in the Caucasus Mountains on the Russian border, is it? <laughs> so many things going on there. When we first found out about this region, we were like watching Leveson Wood, you know, walk through on foot and like finding all these remote, remote... far flung villages, <laughs> people that had never met outsiders before. I wasn't for one second expecting to find this establishment at 2,400 metres at a petrol station. But there we go. Such is the way of travelling. <laughs> we rejoined the route as it became congested with international lorries who used the dangerous route to transport goods between Russia and the former Soviet countries, which brought its own set of problems as impatient drivers forced themselves between small gaps on the road that was barely wide enough for two vehicles to pass. The Georgian military road is an important trade route between Russia, Georgia, Armenia and Azerbaijan, and it's also common to see convoys from the Stan countries traversing their way through the mountains. In 2006, Russia closed its side of the border due to escalating tensions between the two countries, and didn't reopen it until 2010. In recent times, the border has been used by Russians fleeing conscription. It was a stark reminder of continuing tensions in this region of the world. But things hadn't always been so. The Russia-Georgia Friendship Monument was built in 1983 to commemorate the Treaty of Georgievsk and the friendship between Soviet Russia and Soviet Georgia despite continually worsening relations leading up to the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991. The monument features mosaic depictions of Georgian and Russian heroes, farmers, fairy tales and communist symbols, 
set against a backdrop of the Caucasus Mountains and the fiendishly beautiful Devil's Valley. We pulled over to take a closer look. So we're nearly at the highest point of this road now, which is 2,400 metres. It is very, very cold out here. We've been out a matter of minutes and we are getting numb already. I read that it's minus nine here right now. Minus nine right now in the... With the sun. In theory, in the warmest part of the day. <laughs> wow, look. So we've just pulled over at a massive, massive monument. We're just walking up to it now and we'll show you, but this place is hilarious. There's a guy selling kebabs, listening to 50 Cent, and there's a punch bag machine. It's just <laughs> totally not what you'd expect to see up here. I've got these really romantic notions of what the Caucasus Mountains look like. And so far, <laughs> the mountains are outstanding, but everything else has been a little bit of a surprise for us. They're charging people just to park in the lay-by and walk up to this thing. I wonder how long they've been doing that for. <laughs> it's only like a quid, but it's not the point, is it? <laughs> <sighs> Lucy hates paying for parking anywhere, so that's a <laughs> common theme, don't worry. Right, we've nearly approached this place, so it is absolutely huge, this, this monument. I'm just going to flip the camera around so you can take a look at it. I didn't imagine it being this big, did you? Not at all. I thought it was about half this size. It's massive. <laughs> so this is the Russia-Georgia Friendship Monument that was made to celebrate the friendship between Soviet Russia and Soviet Georgia in 1983. And it's this huge tiled mosaic wall. It's absolutely incredible, the only splash of colour in this otherwise white landscape. a long way down. stuck in this queue now for about 10 or 15 minutes it is right on the peak of this mountain so nearly 2400 meters up it's minus 10 and dropping by the hour because it's getting dark now i mean we've got these stunning views behind us but yeah i've got no idea how much longer we're going to be sat here it's funny at the minute but i've got a feeling this could go on for some time and uh, we don't have any idea where we're staying when we get there. It could be an interesting evening. One thing for certain, I do not want to get stuck at the top of this hill because we are literally on the highest point of this road, which quite possibly means it's going to be the coldest part of this road. <laughs> what have we got ourselves into here? Just to give some context to how much traffic there is here, this is all traffic seemingly on both sides of the road and then we're here. <laughs> so if I just zoom out, that is absolutely miles of traffic. We're going to be here for a long time. <laughs> uh, really wanted to show you guys some proper winter camping tonight, you know, for like the log burner on and all that and cooking a nice meal in the van that is only going to happen if we find somewhere before it gets dark so a new problem we found with a van while we've been sat here is that you have really two options with the heater you can either sit here in the freezing cold or you can have it on full blast but then you get real heady from the diesel fumes that are coming straight up from the engine into the cab so we're kind of semi-hot, semi-cold, sat here with pretty bad headaches now. <laughs> and four of the vents just blow cold air 
only two of them actually blow some kind of warm air and we have no control over the temperature or anything so it's just about bearable so most of the time when we go away in the winter we cover these up with masking tape and i think we're going to do that probably sooner rather than later yeah <laughs> So much traffic has now just come up the mountain. I'm really hoping that we can go soon. This is just unprecedented chaos that we were not anticipating for today. <laughs> so we've now been sat here over two hours. The sun's just about to go down behind the mountain and the van is really not happy. This has started off as quite like a, maybe quite a funny thing, but I'm actually getting quite worried about it now. If we um, turn the engine off, it gets really condensated in the front and it's freezing instantly. So within a minute of turning off the engine, all of the glass is just frozen over from our, from our steam in here in condensation. That's how cold it is up here. It's freezing instantly. I'm trying to run the engine but it's smoking like mad and it it's just sending out huge loads of white smoke across the road as you can see here you know smoking everyone out it's really not good it's really not good I'm getting a little bit worried now we're gonna break down up here and there's just there's just literally nothing we can do we're just stuck here indefinitely soon confident that our brakes had defrosted, but another danger quickly emerged. A horde of impatient drivers who'd also been part of the two-hour queue. pushed on as the sun began to set behind the vast mountains, hoping we'd make it there in one piece. So, this 
video has not gone how we planned at all. But they rarely do if they're a good adventure, do they? <laughs> That's it. So yesterday we were planning to get to Stefan's Minder, which we have, and then we were going to go and camp somewhere and show you guys how we adapt to winter travel. So we haven't really adapted because last night we ended up getting a guest house and it wasn't exactly the fear of the cold, it was more the fact that we got held up in traffic for two hours and by the time we got here it was dark and we didn't really have time to find a suitable place to stay partly because everything here is snowed under by at least a foot of snow. Yeah we had no chance, the one place we were going to try everyone was coming down the road with snow chains on <laughs> it was just a sheet of ice, ice and a really steep hill yes we've got snow chains do we want to do that in the dark no obviously not we're was, not crazy so. it was minus 17 which we thought we were willing to give it a go but there was a wind chill as well and it was quite windy and we just thought that's going to be the end of it yeah. we just <laughs> we're not putting ourselves through this kind of punishment just for your enjoyment <laughs> <laughs> so today we've been staying in a nice hotel with a warm room and it's been wonderful we've been editing our video so it's not been a wasted day completely it's not gone above minus 10 today and tonight it's going to be minus 21. We've so never taken our van to anywhere this cold <laughs> we don't know how it's going to adapt whether it's going to be okay or not but tomorrow morning <laughs> we're going to try and start the van and we're going to hopefully go and see some of the scenery around this place because it's absolutely beautiful and you it can, is breathtaking you can see every corner we turn behind us is the most amazing backdrop of mountains we had some lovely snow today and now the clouds are cleared and it's beautiful sunset i mean it's like the alps of georgia isn't it the Caucasus? they're just incredible especially they're, in winter they're like the alps that we can actually afford yeah it's a lot better <laughs> better value for money here than it would be in um Switzerland or oh, yeah. Austria or Germany or anywhere like this for example so <laughs> it's absolutely spectacular we are having a good time it's not quite the time we anticipated but you can't make this up can you, you can't. What, what can you do <laughs> and this is why I bought my papka which is a traditional Caucasian hat made that slippery <laughs> made of wool and it's super warm um i thought i was going to see more people wearing them to be honest people just seem to be staring at me wearing mine but you know what i've got the warm head okay then you just slide <laughs> <laughs> this hill we're walking down is just solid ice i don't even know how we drove up this or how we're going to get down it yesterday we saw a car sliding diagonally down the hill toward the main road didn't we i don't know what happened to him <laughs> one of us is going to go i'll slow the tip in a minute <laughs> so anyway we're rambling the point is that we're taking you guys out for a traditional georgian meal which means that you can watch us eat some traditional georgian food and we'll let you know how it is so we finally found a restaurant that's open we're just trying to decipher what is available and what's vegetarian so we're looking at this add zaf sandal We've translated it, but it just comes up with Adidas sandals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fancy eating those. It looks yeah. really nice. These are delicious for Kali. So these are like walnut puree with vegetables. spinach and spices, different vegetables, absolutely delicious. And then lots of walnut dishes, quite heavy. Lots of them cooked in clay dishes as well in the oven. Beans in a pot is something we absolutely love. That's delicious. We're going to try that. So every time we go out to a restaurant in this country, we get this bean stew. Just can't get enough of it. The flavours are so fresh. It's almost like a bean curry. Mm. Lots of coriander, lots of spices. This is the Adidas sandals. It's called Aja Sandali. Aja Sandali. So it's got cubes of potato, carrot, pepper, onion, aubergine, loads of coriander, and cooked in a really nice tomato-y kind of spicy sauce. Spicy, is it? Very much like Bombay potatoes. Mm, in a clay dish. Thank you. We've ordered too much food. So here, I think we've just got like baked mushrooms with more coriander, peppers and onions right up my street. I never get to eat mushrooms normally because Lucy hates them. So I'm really excited. I have ordered some rather non-traditional Mexican potatoes. But they do serve them literally everywhere here. So they're more of a Georgian thing than a Mexican thing, I would say. 
So all of this food in front of us, this lovely potato vegetable dish, the bean clay pot, the mushroom fry, the potatoes, the bread and the two drinks came to about £16 I think. Pretty good value. It's really hearty and healthy food, apart from the chips. <laughs> It's just delicious. You know, we haven't got bored of going out here yet. Every time we go out, the food is just a knockout. Like every time. Honestly. Really, really rate this country's food highly. Absolutely stuffed. They can't eat another mouthful. Still got to walk home yet in my last 20. <laughs> should we get a taxi? <laughs> it's only like two minutes up the road. Yeah, should we get a taxi? <laughs> ready to retreat for the night? Do I look ready? Yes. Oh, no. I think the fuel has gelled. We've got this additional fuel pump here, which was designed for kind of preventing like water getting into the fuel like we had in Macedonia a few years ago. So we've got the fuel here. As you can see, that seems to be very thick. <laughs> in fact, there's no movement in that whatsoever. That's like gone like a putty. Oh dear. And that's the diesel. <laughs> oh, we're getting diesel through. She doesn't sound very happy. What? No. <gasps> Accelerate. Oh. I can't believe it even tried to start without easy start. It's not good though, is it? <laughs> She's not happy. She's not happy. She's not happy. I can't believe that even like went through and tried to ignite. This is the coldest we've ever tried to start it in. Usually it's like three starts and then maybe it'll go on third. Maybe without easy start, but I'm, yeah, I'm surprised it even coughed then. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I thought this was going to be a whole saga on this video of trying to get the van started, easy starting it, trying to get it running. I don't know, it might still cut out. She is a priest. <laughs> we usually get issues trying to start it in what, minus three, minus four. Um, it's about minus 11 right now. It has warmed up since last night, but that's the coldest we've ever started the van in and it just started! The LDV! <laughs> <laughs> Amazing little beast. Minus 11 indoors. What have we got up here? Minus 9 under the bed. Oh me. Everything is frozen solid. Our fruit and veg is orange, solid. All of our water, completely solid. Let's <laughs> gonna take some defrosting. We arranged a tow to the only garage in the region, which thankfully wasn't too far away, where we were told to wait for the mechanic. 
We waited, and we waited, but there was no sign of him. So we decided to take matters into our own hands. What are you doing, Ben? Just um, thawing out the water, just <laughs> rotating it like a kebab on the flame to try and melt some, <laughs> melt some of the ice. So we have no liquid water in the van? No liquid water, no. Just plenty of frozen water. <laughs> Once Ben had defrosted enough water, we heated a hot water bottle and wrapped it around the fuel filter. Then we waited some more. We are on the move again. After a few hours of sitting in the sun with the engine running and a hot water bottle wrapped around the fuel filter, we managed to ungel it enough to get the van moving again. Yay! Mm. <laughs> really pleased we fixed it ourselves and we didn't have to pay a mechanic. I mean, I think all he would have done is point a hairdryer at it, to be honest. It's good to know for the future. So we've still got a few hours of daylight left. And um, hopefully we're going to show you guys some of the beautiful sights of this area of Georgia. We started our journey toward the aptly named village of Snow to visit the giant Stonehead sculptures. George's answer to Easter Island. The heads are carved in depictions of some of George's famous artists, literary and historic figures. Although in person, they were closer in size to an Easter egg than Easter Island. We pushed on further through the mountains, driving through deep snow, admiring long-lost villages, ancient watchtowers, and the peaks of the greater Caucasus Mountains. We stopped off to see the Sioni Basilica, a 10th century church with defence tower where elders once gathered to make important decisions. Across the valley lay the Panchetti Towers and former village, one of the region's oldest settlements, which was abandoned around 70 years ago in favour of the lower levels of the valley. The towers served as a place of refuge for the villagers in times of trouble. We explored the frozen Trousseau Valley, a place of monasteries, ancient towers and abandoned settlements, blanketed by layers of snow. The road was barely visible amongst the icy tundra, but our plucky LDV powered through. The small villages lay deserted for the winter months, but come spring, a handful of residents would return to their summer homes. ascended the Terek Valley, a place that receives almost no sunlight in the winter months, and the final hazardous stretch of the Georgian military road. Parts of the road here were permanently frozen, with a strong wind whipping the snow into small blizzards. Here the Terek River flows down from a glacier high in the Caucasus, to carve out the Darial Gorge, flowing through Georgia North Ossetia, Chechnya and Dagestan, then finally into the Caspian Sea. We were following much the same route as the Terek, although our journey would end far sooner, at the border with Ingushetia. So after this morning's problems, we did not think that we would make it to this destination. Just in front of us is Russia. It's the beginning of the Islamic Republics of the Caucasus Mountains, and we cannot believe we have come this far. 
can't believe we've made it to the very northeastern corner of Georgia in the winter in our LDV. I mean, even to say that sentence out loud just sounds mad, doesn't it? And just across the border over there is Ingushetia, and this is as far as we can go northeast on this journey for now. There is no way we can cross that border into Russia, politically speaking, for the foreseeable future. But if we could, we would be across there in a heartbeat, wouldn't we? One day we will. It's, it's destined to happen. We are going to reach Russia at some point, but for now, we're just going to have to look at it from here and say hello <laughs> <laughs> from afar. So this is as far north as we will be going on this part of our journey. From now on, we're going to be heading east and south. We've got loads more to come. I hope you stick around. The journey is not over yet. Join us next time on our journey as we experience the fun and chaos of Berikoba, an 8,000 year old pagan festival in rural Georgia. We stop off at an abandoned Soviet airfield before heading deep into the wilderness, taking a three day off road journey towards the country's most eastern point, along tracks recommended for four wheel drives only. Will our 20-year-old two-wheel drive LDV conquer the wilderness, or will we have to retreat? Um. <laughs> I can sort of excavate. Ow! Oh, for sakes! It's just gone everywhere. I was so careful. If that's you being careful, I'd hate to see what uh, clumsy this is like. You know what clumsy loose is like, they're always clumsy loose. Dude. I can't do this up, look at it, it's frozen solid. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a chopstick. Oh well. It's <laughs> not enough snow to do that really. <laughs> it's okay, just pretend it's on, just pretend it's on. So I want to say something about like... Oh, thanks. For behind the scenes videos and to see the reality of making a TV program and travelogue series, join us over on Patreon.